I want history to remember me. Not <clears throat> that I was the first black woman to be elected to the Congress. Not as the first black woman to have made a bid for the presidency of the United States, but as a black woman who lived in the 20th century and who dared to be herself. I want to be remembered as a catalyst for change in America. Throughout her career, Shirley Chisholm used her skills in debate and diplomacy to be a catalyst for change. She is famous for being the first in many political arenas. Enduring to be her full self, she opened the door for many to follow. But what she really wanted to be remembered for is catalyzing real change for others. This is the story of one of those changes which has impacted millions of Americans. It is the story of how Shirley Chisholm used debate and diplomacy to win. For the first time in U.S. history, a minimum wage for domestic workers such as housekeepers and nannies. It is a story filled with successes, failures, and consequences that shows there is still work to be done to carry on Shizlam's legacy and to keep undoing the legacies of racism and sexism in U.S. labor laws. It is a story with one wild plot twist evolving a man that Martin Luther King called the most dangerous racist in America. And it is, in the end, a story of why representation matters. Shirley Chisholm was born in Brooklyn in 1924 to a working class family. Her parents were immigrants, her mother from Barbados and her father from Guyana. Her father worked in the factory and her mother was a domestic worker. As a child, Chisholm noticed the long hours her mother worked and the low pay she received. She said, My mother was a domestic and I used to see how she would come home so tired. And year after year, my mother was still making the same amount, $1.40 an hour. This was below the minimum wage, but domestic workers, like her mother, were not protected by the law. Chisholm studied hard and excelled at girls high school, and she became a champion debater at Brooklyn College. Her debate coach suggested she enter politics, but she said to him, You forget two things, I'm black and I'm a woman. She decided to become a teacher instead. She earned a master's from Columbia and taught for several years. But the idea of running for office lingered in her mind. In 1964, she ran for the New York State Assembly and won. Four years later, she became the first black woman elected to Congress. Four years after that, she became the first black woman to run for president. I am the candidate of the people of America. <laughs> Whenever she ran and wherever she served, she used her debating skills to persuade voters and colleagues, and she used her diplomatic skills, including fluent Spanish, to build coalitions. She served in Congress for 14 years, passing over 50 pieces of major legislation. Right before she retired, an interviewer asked her about her greatest achievement. She said, The thing I'm most proud of is the minimum wage law, where domestics, of whom some 80 or 90 percent are black and brown women, are now part of the Fair Labor Standards Act. The Fair Labor Standards Act of 1938 was the last major part of FDR's New Deal. It was considered a huge victory for workers. It guaranteed a minimum wage of 40-hour work week, social security, unemployment compensation, and the right to bargain collectively. But this law also contained racist and sexist assumptions about who counted as a worker and who did not. Many black and brown workers and women, such as Chisholm's mother, were not covered. This racism and sexism was not an accident. As the National Domestic Worker Alliance says, The domestic work industry was built on the centuries-long economic exploitation and social subjugation of black women. When Roosevelt first proposed the bill, it sparked racist and sexist ads in the newspaper that warned, Housewives, beware! If the wages and hours bill goes through, you will have to pay your Negro girl $11 a week. In order to win the support of Southern Democrats, Roosevelt announced the bill would not apply to domestic help. So for decades, domestic workers were excluded from the protections of the new law. But in the late 60s, domestic worker organizations began lobbying for a minimum wage. And Chisholm used two main tools to help them win that fight in Congress, debate and diplomacy. When Shirley Chisholm debated in support of the bill in the House of Representatives, she demonstrated why representation matters. She said, My own mother was a domestic, so I speak from personal experience. 
and she made her case using research facts and figures. She pointed out that over 50% of poor black families were headed by women, and that over half of these women worked full-time as maids, yet still had incomes below the poverty line. And she dismantled the arguments of her opponents. For instance, her opponents said expanding the minimum wage would cause inflation, but Chisholm pointed out that two of their own experts had said it wouldn't. She also pointed out the absurdity of her opponent's sexist arguments. For instance, Nixon, Secretary of Labor, had warned that paying domestic workers a minimum wage can make housewives revolt. He said, You open the door to a lot of trouble. Your wife will want to get paid, so we have to be very careful unless we are ready to do the dishes. He also suggested that keeping track of payroll records would be too hard for women. In the debate, Chisholm tore such sexist ideas apart. This may come as a shock to the members of this house, but in most homes, it is the wife who handles the family budget and bookkeeping. To suggest that women do not know how to add and subtract is an insult to women and totally contrary to all existing evidence. Shazam concluded by pointing out the hypocrisy in her opponent's logic since they were the same people who had opposed welfare programs. She said if the bill does not pass, it will mean that all the rhetoric about welfare cheaters and loafers is nothing but a lot of hot air because you never meant for people to be able to work and earn a wage adequate to support themselves. And she rested her case. The second tool Chisholm used to pass the bill was her diplomacy. The New York Times said her congressional office served as a command post in the successful fight to extend the House's minimum wage legislation. Her office work included phone calls, meeting, petitioning, lobbying, and letter writing campaigns. The article adds that Chisholm was instrumental in uniting the women's movement with the labor movement. This was not easy, since the two movements had just been fighting over the Equal Rights Amendment. Chisholm also secured the support of all members of the Black Caucus. But to win the final votes needed to pass the bill, Chisholm calls in a favor from a very unlikely friend, the famously racist Alabama governor, George Wallace. Segregation now, segregation tomorrow, and segregation forever. <laughs> Before we go further, it's worth looking at how NHD and the National Museum of American Diplomacy define diplomacy. Diplomacy is the art and practice of building and maintaining relationships and conducting negotiations with people using tact and mutual respect. Building a relationship and fostering mutual respect were key to Chisholm's diplomatic success with Wallace. Back in 1972, when Chisholm was running for president, Wallace was one of her opponents. But something terrible happened to Wallace on the campaign trail. A would-be assassin shot him, paralyzing him from the waist down. When Chisholm heard the news, she suspended her campaign and flew to the hospital to visit Wallace. Her visit surprised many people, and it disappointed many of her supporters. It also surprised Wallace himself. What? He was able to say, Shirley, Chisholm, what you doing here? I said, George, I get to see you. And according to Wallace's daughter, Peggy, he asked, What are your people going to say about your coming here? Shirley Chisholm replied, I know what they're going to say, but I wouldn't want what happened to you to happen to anyone. She held his hands. And he, was, he just cried. Oh, he cried. And he never forgot her kindness. So two years later, when Chisholm needed a few more votes to get the bill passed, she called Wallace, who convinced his southern colleagues to vote for it. The bill passed and became law. It was a huge historic success for domestic workers. The main success was that it made life more sustainable for many, many working families. It undid some of the racism and sexism of the 1938 law by putting the wages of domestic workers on par with other workers. But the bill also had some failures. The new law still excluded some domestic workers, including live-in workers and home health care aides. It also did not provide protections like paid time off or unemployment benefits. Finally, the law proved difficult to enforce because many domestic workers continued to be paid under the table. But the bill and Chisholm's work have had lasting consequences. Domestic worker organizations have continued to dismantle the racism and sexism and labor laws. In 2020, the National Domestic Workers Alliance published an inspiring political agenda with a tribute to Shirley Chisholm. It says, Unbossed, a black domestic worker agenda. When Shirley Chisholm ran for president, her slogan was unbought and unbossed. The document says her slogan is now a black feminist mantra and that today's black domestic workers claim this mantle of visionary leadership. 
and is not, of course, just domestic worker organizations who have been inspired by Chisholm's legacy. One political scientist said of her, Shirley was always trying to plant seeds that would only bear fruit in the future. Just look at all these seeds coming to fruition.